Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdut's Newsstand, and I did say that I was going to be doing a longer in-depth video on Fear State, but because after going over it, it was so long and expansive, I'm going to cut it into two videos. Basically, in this one, I am going to talk about the buildup and a little bit about the tie-ins, and then in my other video, we will talk about the resolving conflict, the main title, and a little bit of the Gardner and the secret file. So, get set. This will be some long, in-depth reviews. Okay, it's a big event. I want to talk about it. But let's talk first about how big this actually is. And I want to do so by showing you the Fear State Checklist. This event includes 35 titles, ranging from August to December. This took over a lot of the main titles, including Batman and Detective Comics. Some of the side titles, including Catwoman, Harley Quinn, Nightwing, and then even some tie-ins. Fear State Alpha, Fear State Omega, I Am Batman, another Arkham Order of the World, which actually, I will be perfectly honest, I am not going to include Task Force C, nor Arkham City Order of the World in this review because I've talked about them both separately and I love them both, but they really don't tie into Fear State. They have no actual ties to the main title, so I'm kind of going to exclude them, put them over the side. We can talk about them at a different time, but right now I really want to start with the build up to what is Fear State. Now, unlike the Joker War, which its only lead into the event was the ending where Joker got a hold of Bruce Wayne's funds, the cowardly lot was all set up for this event and introduced us to Simon Saint, Miracle Molly, the Unsanity Collective, the Gardener, Peacekeeper One, and Queen Ivy. Now, it also explained in the cowardly lot, due to the City of Bane, Death Metal, Joker War, People in Gotham basically had never been more primed to be pushed over that edge with fear. They also revealed that Renee Montoya is back on the force and now is actually police commissioner. She seems to trust the mayor because he was a cop, Mayor Nakano, right? Tinian writes her as if she's conflicted, but standing her ground. Now, when we switch over to her being written by John Ridley, he writes her as if she's the mayor's lapdog and she hates a mask. Despite John, just in case you don't know, Mr. Ridley, she is the question. She's not going to hate mask, but I digress. We are also introduced to Sean Mahoney from the DC Infinite Frontier, one shot as Peacekeeper Zero One, but also revealed that Harley and he have kind of a brutal relationship. She calls him a brutal son of a bitch since she was the doctor at the asylum. We also get the reveal that Saint has been hiring the Unsanity Collective to make the media afraid and then betrayed them all in a tax city hall, right? So at the point of divergence between future state and present day actually occurs in Batman 111. So I want to be clear here when I say future state was pointless. Yep, pointless. I hope you enjoyed the stories, but it means nothing in continuity. We have that point of divergence in 111. Peacekeeper 1 um, approaches Crane, and in the pages of future state, Crane actually surrenders. Here, he does not, and he injects Sean with fear toxin, and takes down Batman, um, who, who was observing the whole thing, right? So at the same time, we have the Gardener, Ghostmaker, and Harley all go to Ivy, who is now Queen Ivy. Apparently, she split again. No reference, actually, to her split in the mini of Harley and Ivy, but okay. And is a uh, part of her is out there. And a part of her is a good side. So this all leads to the main line, which basically becomes then the falling action. So let's talk about the title Fear State Alpha, which kind of launched this entire thing. It is revealed 
months prior to a day that Saint approaches Crane about his fear state theory. He wrote back when he was still a doctor. The idea of pushing a society so far over the edge with fear that they'll burn down but come back on the other side stronger. Saint provides Crane with anything and everything he asked for. All right. Harley takes the Unsanity Collective to where Ivy is, Eden, providing sanctuary, but it's clear the only thing that's keeping them all alive is what little bit of love that Ivy and Harley have left for each other. Now, we also meet up with Peacekeeper 01, who is stumbling around Gotham sewer, hallucinating, just kind of going crazy. Um, in Montoya, Renee Montoya is not happy to find out how much control the mayor has given to the magistrate program. We also have this character named the Anti-Oracle. Now, I want you to remember that name because, okay, it doesn't matter. You don't have to remember that name. It's going to change in a little bit. Don't you worry. Continuity means nothing. Okay, there are a few errors I am going to point out. So, as I'm explaining this and going through it, I want you to remember that there are parts I'm going to be critical. I'm not just going to break every title down. There are parts like with this, the anti-oracle, who will eventually become a seer, who we find out is a child. She hijacks Bab's communication, sending out messages, actually false messages, seemingly to say that Batman is dead and everybody should be terrified and, oh my God, the world's going to end, right? Fire and brimstone, all that fun stuff. Yep, child. Okay, Selena finds Ivy, actually the good half, in Alleytown. And then we get Jace Fox, who is getting ready to put on the Batman suit. And that's where we'll begin with the tie-in of I Am Batman. I Am Batman sees Jace go to his first main public outing as the new Batman, getting some information about a bump, goes out in the suit. People assume he is on the protester side, which was already heated up um, with the law enforcement and everything. He actually makes things worse. Much worse, not better. Jace then admits he wanted to appropriate Batman. And hold on a second, listen to this. He wanted to do that because he feels it was his father's work that made Batman. Bruce Wayne, not Bruce Wayne. It, w it was Lucius. Okay, okay, Jace. You want people to like this character, but you add that kind of stuff in. Okay, all right. Anarchy, remember Anarchy? He was shot dead. He wasn't part of anything, but he was just randomly shot dead um, by a kid who was led to do it by a bunch of anti-mask rhetoric. It is um, about to take, he's about to take the fall for this organization, right? So Renee is furious, but it seems Tanya Fox is indifferent and it's clear Renea, Renee's words get to her and she decides to actually represent Anarchy's killer. Jace is focused on finding this Arcadane guy from the army days. Now, I don't know if I am saying that correctly. In the title of Second Son, we learned about Arcadane. And he really has no part, but yet he is a big part of Jace's past that we've barely learned anything about. But Arcadane, yeah, he won't, he's coming back over into this title. Okay, but he gets word that a group called the Moral Authority. Yes, that's not a joke. The name is the Moral Authority. It's basically an Antifa XP. And it's clear that this kid that shot Anarchy was a part of that group. He wants to bust him out and his mother is there. So, of course, Chase drops everything to go help his mama. Now, I, I, I get that. I do. So, Tanya actually shoots a guy, Jace's father. Shoot, or Jason's mother, I'm sorry, shoot, shoots a guy who is ready to kill both her and the Glid. She is clearly shaking up. It is also revealed the entire riot was to get the kid, and it was a distraction so that they could kill Arcadane. Who else ties the Saints company? Let's bring it all around. I don't. John Ridley, can you, can you make me want to buy your title a little bit more? Okay, maybe not. So let's switch over to a title that I actually really enjoy, and we're going to combine it. We're going to combine 
Harley Quinn and Catwoman. Now we see Selena and Harley are dealing with this drug wing. We find out that Scarecrow has been helping Hugo Strange the entire time. Also, he's not a fan of Keepsake using his toxin. Mm, more on Keepsake later. Kind of not really. He's not that important. Not going to lie. So prior to meeting up with the gardener, Harley um, and Kevin are camping out. And they go have this wild animal life thing. And we see a dog that's made out of a waffle. And it's super fun, right? So Allytown goes into lockdown during the event. And the magistrate tries to take down Selena and her crew as their secondary targets. But their primary target is that of Ivy that is split from Queen Ivy. They hear word from Babs that despite what the anti-Oracle slash seer slash entitled child says... Batman's not dead. While Harley is out dealing with Ivy, Kevin soups up to help however he can. That is basically his main arc. And I like Kevin a lot, but he's not really any integral part of Fear State. While Selena is helped dealing with Ivy, the strays do what they can to keep the magistrate back. We have a back and forth with Ivy that happens between the Catwoman and Harley books. Catwoman seems to take it a lot more seriously and is all about getting Ivy back from the likes of Riddler and Penguin. Harley deals with it, well, Harley's way, I guess is the best way to put it. She deals with it with her feelings for Ivy and basically keeping her away from Keepsake. Now, I'm not going to talk about Keepsake. Not really another integral part of the story. So by the end of these arcs, though, Selena has gotten over a fear of being alone. And Harley has to accept that there is a chance she could lose fun-loving Ivy when this merger happens. But it needs to be done, and deep down, Harley knows Ivy will always love her. Love it, love it, love it. So, let's talk about another tie-in. We've got Nightwing. Nightwing. So good. Mind I say, every single week Nightwing came out, I was happy. Nightwing, after arriving in Gotham... Due to a fake message from the anti-Oracle, Nightwing is ambushed then by the magistrate. Batman shows up, helps him out, fills him in on what's going on. Dick then heads over to Babs, who suits up his Batgirl again to help, you know, take out all of her systems, every single one of them. It's clear that the anti-Oracle, a.k.a. Seer, and I think this is when the shift in name changes because they are very, and I'm going to say this in the nicest way possible, DC Comics, listen, you had this character named Anti-Oracle and Seer, depending on which title it fell in, only to find out again, something I can, I'm sure you can assume by now I'm obviously upset with, that it was a child. Tell me how it makes sense. Make it make sense. Okay. It's clear that the Anti-Oracle, aka Seer, knows everything that's been in Bab's system and is using deep fake technology to trick people into not knowing who she is. Dick and Babs head to Oracle 2, which is one of the backups that cannot be uh, assessed remotely. When they get there, it's booby trapped with fear toxin. Really good, really good book. Um, and we actually find out what their worst fears is. And their worst fear is actually losing each other. But thanks to Tim, they recover, shut down everything, and find out that the seer is actually on board Simon Saint's, the magistrate ship, UFO type thingy, right? UFO? I guess you could call it a UFO. We're going to call it a UFO. <laughs> and then they get word from stuff and cast. They are um, at the clock tower. The seer taunts everyone before blowing up the tower. Okay. Fortunately, they were chased off by the same magistrate troops that caused the explosion and then survive. So the Bat family at this point is all united. They trick a group of magistrate troops into an alley. They steal their tech and then fly up to the headquarters, the UFO, the Saint, their flying object. Yeah. They, they they do it on drones. I, I, I want to be able to do that. I just, I do, I do. And they fly their way through, but the seer taunts them basically that one, she will bring the ship down. And two, there is a bunch of kids left on board and they are basically a bunch of little kids that rich families left in Saint's care and they need to save them. They make it through, take out Saint, 
stop the ship from crashing and realized that the seer got away. And it's actually revealed that one of these rich kids that, you know, Simon Saint was taking care of was the seer. Yeah, I'm, I could go on and on about this. I could go on and on about this, but I don't like it. I'm not going to lie. And it doesn't make me excited for the Batgirl title. So we do have a Batgirl backup in a Batwoman story in Urban Legends. And that is basically the seer generating a deep fake of a rioter making it look like Cass and Batgirl, you know, um, murdered someone. And it spreads all over the Internet. Renee informs Kate about the video going around and, you know, about Batgirl and demands answers. Kate shows up at her door. Kay goes and confronts Cass, who is already broken up about the video. People think she's a killer. She's not happy with the situation. Seer taunts Kate that she's been manipulated and some magistrate troops try to attack her apartment. Where Beth is. Yep, Beth. So Kate arrives and finds out that Beth has become Red Alice. Beth, back in control, decides to fake being Red Alice so she can go to the Church of Crime to aid them in stopping the seer, but it turns out she's two steps ahead. A bunch of magistrate troops storm in. Kate shows up to help. The sisters fight them off. Beth nearly loses herself to becoming Alice again. They help inform Dick and Babs where the seer is located, even though they do... Okay. Even though they do figure it out later, and Babs is not dressed as Batgirl... Weird continuity hiccup. Editors, pay attention. Um, most of the Batgirl's backup is Steph and Cass running around the magistrate troops, um, nearly getting blown up at the clock tower as their lives are ruined by the seer, but they still keep an upbeat attitude. Another continuity ear here on, I would probably frame this on Alyssa Wong, is the stuff with Batwoman and, um, Red and, and her sister, right? Because during, we haven't seen them to, since 2007. And when Alice was with uh, the religion of crime, she was just Alice. She wasn't Red Alice. Red Alice was actually more of um, what she did in the New 52. She was an anti-hero. Now, why they messed that up is beyond me. But if I know it as a consumer, it's likely you should know it. Just going to go there with the continuity issues. Yes, yes, we are. So let's talk about Detective Comics. Detective Comics. The bulk of this arc is basically Batman protecting Nakano, who starts to have his eyes open to how much his anti-mask vendetta blinded him to the real threat happening around him and manipulating him. They also deal with the monstrous creation of Parasite or Hugh Vile. I absolutely loved the Detective Comics, Mariko Tamaki is doing a fantastic job. But by the end of this, it is unclear if he has given up his anti-mask vendetta. The mayor is now refocusing on determining who the real monsters are and not just making assumptions. And that's where we're actually going to start part two. We're going to start off with the secret files and then we're going to go into the main title. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Hit that bell. Leave me a comment. If you want part two, it will be out later today, but there is some serious, serious continuity issues that they need to work out. I don't know if they just need a couple more editors. Ben Abernathy, you need to get on it, but I've pointed out three or four within 18 minutes. That's sad. You need to get on this. You really do. So it's not ruining this. I'm not being mean. It's not ruining the fear state as a whole. But those little hiccups are could have been what made this from a mediocre, mediocre event to a good one, right? So anyways, make sure you guys are subscribed for part two. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.